put my hat in the wash and it shrunk. So now every time I wear it, it just leaves a line on my head. I'm trying to make it look like skiers uh, skiing on the flower, but more work needed. Anyway, the, um, the question I get asked most by people is, can you leave me alone, please? <laughs> the question I get most is when people are asking me about my pictures and they'll say something along the lines of, how did you do that? And more often than not, I've just started saying Photoshop. But I don't think actually that that's very helpful because I think people know that I use Photoshop. So I thought I'd go through the real basics for 99% of the images that I take. Uh, if you have even a vague understanding of how Photoshop works, I don't think you'll find this very interesting. So, uh, so I've linked Doug the Pug below, so I'm just going to check that out. Um, and I'll see you next time. If you don't know how Photoshop works, and have always wanted to know, I'll show you. So here, I've opened up a document in Photoshop. So these are all my tools, and these are my layers. Photoshop works in layers. So. My first layer is a picture of a big wave, as you can see. On top of that, I've put another layer, which is a picture of a lady just chilling out in a little kayak. Now, as you might have seen in my thumbnail, what I've done is blended these together to make it look like she's chilled with absolutely no reason to be. Uh, now, this is a super simple concept to work through this all with, because you've only got two photos, and I'm using quite a lot of both of them, so it makes it easier to, to go through. Both of these images, by the way, are from Unsplash, which is a great way to get hold of photos that you can use for pretty much everything, uh, and just practice. So, first layer's on, and then I'm gonna turn my second layer that sits on top of it on. In Photoshop, anything that's on top will always appear first. So, if I moved this bottom layer, to be on top, you won't see it because it's on top of the boat now. So I'll just move those back. Now I can move this image wherever I want and typically when I add another layer into Photoshop that I want to add to a concept, what I'll do is I'll lower the opacity of it just to see where about I want to stick it. So in this instance, I'm pretty happy with something like that. Bang on center and then I'll boost the opacity up again. So how do we get rid of all this other stuff that we want to get rid of? The answer is called layer masks. So with this top layer selected that I want to work on, I'm going to go down to this button down here to add a layer mask. And you'll see that it's popped up another box right next to the image that I want to work on. And essentially what you can do is paint away bits of the image that you don't want to use. And you do that by selecting black. So with a brush tool, I've got the color black and I can just paint away whatever I don't want to see and because this layer is sitting on top of the layer underneath it what you see is the image underneath it if I hide the image underneath it then obviously you'll just see a transparent background but if I don't then you'll see the image underneath and very simply that's all it is so you just paint away what you don't want and if ever you want to add something back you just paint with white now there are loads of different ways I could choose to cut out this boat and this lady. I can either paint, as I just showed, which might take a little while. I could use any of these selection tools. So you'll see this is a quick selection tool, which does a pretty good job of automatic stuff when there's enough contrast. doesn't do a particularly good job when there's not much contrast. I could use the pen tool and draw around the image. And the pen tool is probably the easiest and most accurate one to use. But if I've got time, I find masking with the brush to be the most therapeutic. And so I'll just go around roughly and I'll zoom in. And I'll just adjust the hardness of the brush and the size of the brush accordingly. And I'll just go around all these edges and paint away whatever I don't want. Uh, and if you keep going, you'll end up with something like this which I think looks pretty good. Now this works quite well because the two things that you need to match from both images 
do match quite well. So you need the type of light to be similar, and in this instance it is. Uh, it's quite soft, but the lady in the boat in the foreground are slightly in shadow, which works well from behind this wave, because as you can see, the image is backlit, and the perspective works as well. So both images were taken from a very similar perspective, which makes it look much more realistic. So the type and the direction of light are very important, and the perspective is important. If those are both the same in two images, then there's no reason that they can't be easily matched together. Now, I want to make some adjustments to this image, because I'm not particularly happy with the colour of this water. It's a bit green and horrible. I much prefer the watercolour from the original image in the boat. As you can see, that's a lovely watercolour, nice and blue. So, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to this layer here and go down to this icon in the bottom corner next to the layer mask on. And this is where all the adjustment layers are. So I'm going to click on that and I'm going to go to Hue and Saturation. And what that's done is brought up an adjustment layer between these two layers. Now adjustment layers only ever affect what is below them, they don't affect what's above them. Uh, it's not necessary in this case, but if I hold down Alt and click as well, then what I can do is make sure that this adjustment layer only responds to this layer beneath it, and if there were other layers beneath that, they wouldn't be affected either. But I don't need to do that in this case, because this is the only layer beneath it. And what I'm going to do now is just adjust the hue. So. As you can see, as I move this slider along, I can affect the colours in the image. And I quite like where that's at. Uh, but as you'll notice, the problem that I've got is that this hue has been changed for the entire image. So not only have I changed the colour of the water from green to blue, I've changed the colour of the sky from blue to pink, and I don't want that. So, as you can see with adjustment masks, you also get a layer mask too and that works in exactly the same way as the layer mask I showed before so if I get a nice big brush and paint in black across it then I can paint out that adjustment and yes that's very rough but I'm not going to bore you doing it precisely uh, and the only other adjustment I want to make to this really is that the lady and the boat are a little bit dark now so I'm going to go back down to the adjustment layers click on curves and curves are very clever adjustment layers and there's a whole lot they can do but in this instance all I'm going to do is just move it up slightly now as you can see as I adjust this it makes changes to the whole image so I'm just going to adjust it to where I see fit for the lady and the boat I'm going to go down press alt and all that does is make this adjustment layer only visible on the image directly below it so if I unclick that again, you can see that it goes to affect the whole image. Click back, you can see that it only affects the portion of the image that I want to control. Uh, and that's that. And there are obviously hundreds and thousands of effects you can add in various circumstances to improve a concept and bring it together more fully. But layer masks and adjustment layers are the very basics of how you go about stitching images together. Right, I'm getting cabin fever, so I'm going out. Uh, I've got some errands to run, and then I'm going to go to a train station to get a picture of a tunnel. I uh, don't really know what I'm going to do with it yet, but I'm sure I'll think of something. Uh, if you've ordered an open edition print, this might be yours. Thank you. Right, I'm calling it a day, gonna go home. It's too cold, and also it's taken ages to go dark. I did look at the sunset times, but I must have misread them, because I'm sure it should be dark by now. Uh, and most importantly, I've run out of good podcasts to listen to, and I, I can't stand being with my own thoughts for too long. I get super bored. So the plan is, I'm gonna go home and try and work out how to do this flower skiing shot. And fingers crossed, I might finish it today. Yes!